Hello, everyone. Hi, good to see you all. Happy Tuesday. Happy noon on Tuesday. Yeah. So good time of day. Midday webinar here. Yeah. Thank you Happy all so much for joining us. Um, we're so excited to do our Q4 update. Um, and we, and then just, you know, in this Q4 is like such Q4 and Q1 are such, such fun quarters because it's impossible to really reflect on Q4 without reflecting on the whole year. So we mm -hmm. have some year end updates for Black Swan as well. We have a ton to cover and we have yep. Christian Mack from Lotus here. So we'll dive right in. We'll cover some slides and then we'll jump to the technology slides, um, do the updates on the technology fund and then um, go over to the real estate slides. Yeah. So welcome. Um, if you have any questions, please put those in the Q&A. We'll make sure that we get all of those answered either throughout the conversation if we're able to, or at the end, we always do a Q&A. We try to make sure every single question is answered by the time we're done today. And then feel free to you know, chat, say hello, comments, those sorts of things in the chat. We have um, Rachel joining us today as our producer. And then Kimberly has joined our communications department. A lot Yay. of you, yeah, we're really excited about that. A lot of you will get to know her over the coming months. And so she is joining us as well. Mm -hmm. Let's jump right in. Let's go back to sharing our slides. All right. Everyone see that? So, of course, our general disclaimers, um, our business plan contains privileged and confidential information. Um, everything here is a forward-looking projection. Um, we are giving actual information about what we've accomplished in 2022 and Q4, um, but um, any you know, projections in the future are forward-looking based on past outcomes. Um, consult with your CPA and attorney. Most of you that are listening today have already invested in these funds, but of course, if you're making any investment decision, consult with your advisors before doing so. Mm -hmm. All right, a little bit about us. You want to introduce yeah. us? I have my Black Swan shirt on today. That's pretty rare. Yeah, we're, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm officially we're our Black Swan swag. Yeah, I, I have a new baby blue Black Swan shirt as well as a brand new shirt. So we're trying to expand my color palette beyond black. Yeah. Um, so if you've been on one of our webinars before, you've seen, uh, you know, just a little bit about us. Uh, we uh, are a private equity real estate firm. We've got about a third of a billion dollars in assets under management. Uh, one thing that really sets us apart is our vertical integration. So uh, we have about uh, 30 full-time employees, which um, you know, is, is a lot of employees for an organization our size. We have in-house property management. That's, I think of us as really kind of a property management first business that you know, has a private equity firm so we can own the asset in addition to managing it. Uh, we do our own uh, in-house maintenance. I just had the, the one-year uh, review with a, uh, a maintenance person here, uh, you know, just before mm -hmm. this meeting. I try really hard to just get a little bit of face time with, with each of our staff members, even as we grow like that. Uh, in-house facilities, uh, you know, doing our own cleaning, just uh, our vertical integration is the thing that really sets us apart. Uh, lets us do uh, real estate sales. We have a real estate sales team with over $75 million of real estate sales in uh, 2022, and we're ranked in the top one third of 1% of all real estate sales teams in the country. Uh, we've raised a, a little bit of capital here with uh, over 60 million raised uh, so far. Uh, and uh, we've got our, our wait list fired up there for Black Swan Fund 3. You can go to blackswanfund3.com if you want to join the wait list for our next fund. We're uh, just so uh, uh, grateful and uh, I just feel so privileged all the people who uh, have joined us here in fund one and fund two and we can't wait to serve people in uh, fund three uh, and then we do a little bit of ground up construction as well I spent two hours with a contractor this morning a builder uh, talking about uh, plans for some some future projects we're working on uh, so uh, lots more new construction coming in our, mm -hmm. our future that's something yep. uh, it's cool to buy and renovate and transform something go, going from like the least nice house on the block to the nicest house on the block when you can go from an empty farm field to, uh, uh, you know, a structure that rises up out of the ground, uh, that is a really cool feeling, just creating value that's going to live for, you know, 100 years to come. And, uh, you know, in, in the industry, uh, development is generally speaking the most profitable. It's kind of the, the, the peak of the pyramid, so to speak, in the, in the real estate world. And when you get really good at real estate development, that's when you can create really incredible returns for your investors. So we're excited to, to you know, slowly grow into a, a big, uh, you know, new development piece of our, our vertical integration pipeline as well. Absolutely. Very excited about that. 
So those of you that attended our Q3 webinar know of our big announcement for 2022. So we crested over a thousand doors and a third of a billion in assets under management. Very excited about that milestone. Very excited about the just the continued efficiencies, economies of scale. Interestingly, scale actually makes a lot of things easier. Mm -hmm. And so we're really in that sweet spot where you know we've scaled enough that many things are getting easier. Our team is getting larger. We've got systems and processes in place. And so you know not only are we really excited about the first 10 years of our company and, and getting to this place, but very excited about the next 10 years mm -hmm. because there's just so much momentum happening. So just thank you so much to all of you that have invested with us that you know have made this this reality. You are you are part of this great accomplishment. Thank you. Yes. Uh, these are our seven core values. So we share these occasionally, but really wanted to bring them out for Q4 again, really thinking about reflecting on not just Q4 but end of the year and how how did we get to where we are? What what's what are the building blocks? What's the backbone of the organization? We formalized our core values in 2021, and that was a really lovely process, working with our team, really asking ourselves, what are the things that set us apart? How, how are we doing things differently? How are we adding value in real estate, both for our investors and for our residents in our two sister companies? Black Swan Real Estate is our asset management company, and then Black Swan Living is our property management company. And these are our seven core values. And I think as you're listening to our presentations, visiting us, if you come to our in-person event, um, just if you're interacting with us, you see these values all day um, and what we do. So they are grow authentically, focus on the long term, create infinite opportunity, show up for people, take extreme ownership, embody servant leadership, and radicalize transparency. And with every decision that we're making, we're asking ourselves, does this decision fit in with our core values? And so we just wanted to take a minute to share those again as we're reflecting on the end of 2022. Absolutely. Some frequently asked questions. Um, I put you know, kind of verbatim the answers there so that if you're watching this as the replay or you're pulling this up later, these are the questions that we're getting a lot lately, and I want to make sure everyone has all of this information as readily accessible as possible. We're always thinking about continual improvement. So it was actually an investor who reached out and said, I love your webinars, but they do tend to go a little long. And so could you put a frequently asked questions right at the very top? Continuous um, improvement. Exactly. Rise and in. I said, I would love to do that. And so you know, we'll do that here in the slides and then also um, in the brochure that Rachel sends out here in the next few days. So just kind of going through this really quickly in the interest of time. Um, K-1s will go out in mid to late March. We are working as hard as possible to get them out by the March 15th deadline. I do anticipate that for Fund 2, it might be late March. Our internal deadline is actually April 1st, but that should give plenty of time for folks that do want to file their personal tax return by April 15th. And that's really just because of the number of acquisitions and the cost sake studies that we're waiting on for Fund 2. Um, all of our joint ventures and Fund 1, we are anticipating meeting that March 15th deadline. Everyone's already asking about the next fund. Um, that's a fun question to get. Our main focus right now is deploying yes. and really stewarding well the capital that we have in fund one and fund two. Um, but fund three will likely launch sometime in the summer of this year. Um, how do you log into Investex? The website is blackswan.investnext.com. Please do make sure if you are in fund one that you have your bank account information updated um, in Investnext. Our next in-person event, the Black Swan Real Estate Real Life event, is September 15th through the 17th here in Rochester, Minnesota. You can think of it as like a really, really, really miniature Berkshire Hathaway annual shareholders meeting. That's kind of the vibe that we're going for. Come to Rochester, meet our team, network with other investors and potential investors, learn about real estate. We're going to have a lot of teaching and speaking and then spend time actually looking at properties at the, the feedback for last year was just amazing. Um, we're so excited to do it again and to do it even better. So September 15th through the 17th here in Rochester. Our funds are really different because we have no fees. Um, and people ask, you know, why do you have no fees? We do that so that our investors' interests are placed ahead of our own. We can only profit the same way our investors profit, and we can only profit after our investors profit and after they've received a full return of capital. So that's why we have no fees, and we'll talk about that as we go on through the presentation. A common question is, what is an infinite rate of return? So an infinite rate of return is when all of the cash has been taken out of the deal through either cash flow or a cash out refi, and there's zero dollars left in the deal. 
typically a sale has to happen for there mm-hmm. to be zero dollars left in the deal. But then that stops the production of returns. So our model is to return capital, but to stay in the deal for the next 20 to 25 years so that we can all enjoy that infinite rate of return period as long as possible. Because if there's zero dollars in the deal, then that's a zero in the denominator. So divide by zero is infinite. One of the, one of the questions we, we get is... Um, you know, people who have been in other syndications where it, it uses a refi as the exit, typically those those passive partners are, are cash out of the deal at the cash out refi. Uh, and so they they don't like that we, we do a cash out refi. And we're like, no, 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 you stay in the deal after the cash out refi. And they're like, wait, what? Like, well, what, what's the catch there? So this is the most important concept to understand in our in our whole fund right here. Uh, and, and the people who who get it, who have maybe been in other syndications where they've, they've been cashed out before, uh, this is this is the most critical concept to understand that you get all your money back and then you stay in the deal forever. That's, mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. A, a really th- an incredible thing that sets us apart in addition yep. to not tra- charging any fees. Yep. This is the basis of how we've created all of our personal wealth. Yep. So our very first rental property, we bought it with cash, renovated it with cash and our own labor and some credit cards did a cash out refi, got all of the money back to pay off the credit cards, um, you know, completely replenish our bank account and then more. And there was just that moment that we both remember so vividly where we got in the car kind of almost shaking, like holding this paper check and saying, you know, how can we do this as many times mm-hmm. as possible for the rest of our lives? And that's what we've done over and over and over again. And that's mm-hmm. what all of our investors get to participate in as well. And then a lot of people are asking about interest rates. So, you know, the Fed is continuing to raise interest rates. The most recent interest rate hike was a little more modest than the previous one. So that's good. Um, All of the debt that we have across the entire portfolio, not just fund one, not just fund two, but the entire portfolio is all fixed rate debt with at least four years left on our terms. Um, We've successfully placed second lines on many of the assets as our cash out refi um, strategy there. So all in all, our business plan is still working quite well. We remain very optimistic when we look ahead, say, a year to 24 months, when we're thinking about refinancing out of the assets that are in Fund 1 and Fund 2, we remain very optimistic. Interest rate fluctuations make the game harder, but they don't make the game impossible. And a big part of our success is that we're adding so much value. We're buying such deep value-add projects that there's so much room to work with there on our cash out refi. This is, this is something that really, again, sets us apart. So uh, in 2021 to 2022, about 73% of all multifamily acquisitions in the country uh, were acquired with non-recourse bridge debt. So those are the, the stats I've seen from, from mortgage brokers uh, at the mastermind that I was, I was just at here this past week. And uh, another maybe 15% uh, were uh, institutional products that uh, that have some other kind of you know uh, prepayment penalties, you know huge prepayment uh, prepayment penalties, yield maintenance, the fees, and that sort of thing. Uh, it's a teeny tiny percentage of all multifamily real estate deals that have been done with uh, you know five rate fixed uh, debt. And some of this debt we have almost no prepayment penalty on, almost no origination, like 99% lower origination charges than you'd see with with those other loan products. It's really hard for us to go win this debt. We have to have a lot of lunches. We have to <laughs> network with a lot of bankers and help them, you know, fall in love with us, with our story, and with our investor story. Um, but we thought, you know, eight, eighteen months ago, and and uh, twelve months ago, six months ago, when we were placing our investors' capital, instead of getting the two percent variable rate, we got the three percent fixed rate, and we thought, you know, our, our future selves are going to thank ourselves, our, our present selves for, for making this tough decision. Mm-hmm. And, and today we're sitting on really, really favorable debt when there's a lot of other real estate uh, syndications out there that are that are struggling because they got those those variable rate debt instruments uh, where, you know, they're just you're not set up for long term success in a rising interest rate environment. Hopefully that frequently asked questions is helpful. I'd love to get feedback, either pop it in the chat, email myself, email Rachel. Um, hopefully this is, is useful for everyone to just kind of get some of these really commonly asked questions addressed right away. Let's go to the end of our presentation for our technology slide, and we will bring on Christian to do our update for... We got a lot of slides. Coming. We have a lot of slides. <laughs> we, got, we, got a, we got a move. Here we are. All right. Um, hopefully that was exciting for all of you to see we'll that. Sneak but, preview. Yeah. Um, so the Black Swan Technology Fund One, um, very exciting opportunity to expose our investors to a really high quality opportunity investment 
with Lotus Domain. So Lotus Fund 3 is well over 100 million private equity fund to invest in technology companies. And a big part of the reason we love Lotus's model is because there's vertical integration and there's value add exactly yes. like how we operate real estate is how Lotus operates technology. So they acquire companies that already have some revenue, already have a proven track record of success. And then they have a, essentially kind of the equivalent of a property management company. It's a it's a management company that professionalizes those companies, helps with sales, marketing, finance, all of the things that are needed to really scale that technology company. Um, and we're just so excited to have the opportunity for our investors to have some diversification and exposure to Lotus. Um, shall we bring on Christian? Yeah, Christian, uh, not sure if you, uh, you're you on. There you go. Yep, I'm here. Hey, guys. Hey. How are you doing today, Christian? I'm doing great. How about you guys? Very good. Yeah. All right. So the slide I have up, you know, just talks about how Lotus Fund 3 launched in 2020. So one of the interesting things about our Black Swan Technology Fund is we came in at the end of 2022. So our investors were able to benefit for the, from the first several years of work that, that Lotus has put in into acquiring and growing these companies. There's six companies that are owned. 72 million has already been deployed. Um, and then our first distribution for Black Swan investors went out at the very end of 2022. So that was a, a very exciting time to, to have that opportunity to give returns to our investors. And then Christian, I would just you know love to hear from you um, how the companies are doing, any updates you would like to share. And then if there are any yep. questions specifically for while Christian is on, please do put those in the Q&A or the chat now so that we can ask him while he's still here. Yep. Yeah, no, the, the portfolio is uh, actually doing quite well. Um, uh, I would say that uh, we've made eight investments uh, so far and, uh, you know, across, you know, uh, a handful number of, of platforms. And when I say that, um, you know, uh, that, like we might like invest, um, you know, another round um, in a particular company, assuming they hit certain criteria and so forth. But we have to we underwrite all those things. And and so far, you know, things are are, are doing really well. The, the one portfolio company um, that um that went public on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, it just won a, um, and this is all public information, so uh, it's not something that uh, uh, is insider knowledge, but that they just won a $958 million contract uh, with four other vendors um, with the Department of Defense, wow. basically reinforce the Pacific Rim. Um, so it's kind of cool to win almost a billion dollar contract. Mm -hmm. uh, with, Let's you call know, it a billion. Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, it's kind of cool to beat out like Palantir and, you know, some very big companies uh, to basically mm -hmm. land in that slot. And when you're, you know, when you won it with the likes of like Microsoft and Cisco, um, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good nod in terms of, you know, kind of technology, you know, uh, you know, the right technology. So uh, anyway, um, so that that's going really well. Uh, that, that actual, the stock itself is actually up about, 40%, uh, 40 to 50%, um, you know, from uh, from when we uh, initially went IPO, which is which is great, especially considering that technology in general um, is, uh, you know, historically been, you know, quite a bit down, you know. Um, and, you know, one of the things I do, I get asked a lot is, you know, hey, hey, Christian, you know, you're investing, you know, Lotus is investing in the enterprise software market. Are you worried about a recession? Are you worried about this dislocation with technology? And, and one of the things uh, that I think, you know, I try to remind people is that my, my first company that I started in 1999 uh, called Resolve Systems, uh, we sold it to Insight Partners ultimately, um, but I had my first exit in 2012. Um, it was an automation company and I was always interested as to why, you know, that automation company did extremely well um, during the dot-com implosion and then also the Great Recession. And what I what I realized was that, you know, in the enterprise software space, especially when you're focused in, in segments like automation, collaboration, security, uh, things that are efficiency uh, driven, uh, when there's a recession, Fortune 500 companies have to figure out how to deliver the same product or service, mm -hmm. uh, typically with less people. And so what they do is they invest in enterprise software, which is why, you know, during the dot-com implosion, Great Recession, you know, uh, Resolve grew over 100%, uh, you know, uh, within those years and actually contributed to us selling in 2012. Now, when we started Lotus, I wanted to make sure that we were focused in the segments that, that uh, again, were efficiency oriented because, you know, just like, you know, Warren Buffett said, you know, no one can time the market. You know, I'm, I'm certainly not going to be an exception to that rule. And so I wanted to make sure that we built a system that was uh, recession resilient. Um, and so we, we only really we only invest in in segments that are, you know, efficiency oriented. Um, and so mm -hmm. that's that really hasn't been an issue for us uh, since 2014, because really COVID was a 33 day blip uh, recession. So I wouldn't necessarily count that as a 
a typical recession. Um, but but in so far as uh, the current kind of state of affairs, um, you know, our companies are performing uh, at Performa within a standard deviation. Some of them are doing even better, uh, and like you know, uh, Edge, uh, for instance, Edge TI. Uh, but um, uh, but yeah, it's a it's a, it's a good time to be um, you know with these companies. These companies are growing, you know, at a at a pretty pretty fantastic rate. Um, and you know, we're very you know, we're very optimistic about the future because not only do are our portfolio companies doing well, uh, but also, um, you know, we believe that, uh, you know, the fear, uncertainty and doubt in the marketplace is certainly driving a, a we, we always had, we, we were always finding, you know, off market deals and good deals. But now, especially with the fear, uncertainty and doubt, the quantity and quality mm-hmm. of the deals is a lot higher. And mm-hmm. so uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's send, making send some it, of that over to the real estate industry, Christian. We yeah. need it. So <laughs> we had a yeah, we had yeah, exactly. before, but then it seems like the, the hard, sellers it's... have already decided the recession's over in real estate. So, yeah. 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 So, so, you know, all, all in all, things are, things are going well. Uh, we, we continue to grow out the team. Um, you know, we've got uh, Brett Paulson on board. Uh, he, uh, he came on board. Uh, for, he's been on board for about four months now. Uh, he's, uh, you know, you know, Stanford MBA, you know, used to work in the venture capital, you know, markets. Um, he's adding a whole lot of value uh, in, in terms of portfolio management uh, and also running the consulting organization that, you know, implements that value add, um, much like a general contractor would in, uh, you know, in uh, your real estate deals. Um, you know, he, you know, that team does it for our, our, our companies uh, and so forth. So, um, so yeah, all in all, you know, we're scaling up. Um, and uh, you know it's always good to be in a buying position, especially uh, in these these times. So uh, uh, so we're we're being but we're being very prudent. Um, one of the things is we want to make sure in 2023 that we really you know as we kind of roll you know roll out and deploy the last uh, pieces of capital, uh, which will you know take about another you know year or two, um, that uh, you know we we really buy some really great deals and uh, and uh, you know all of that good stuff. Uh, pay for it. Um, just so you guys know, uh, just actually got out of a meeting uh, with them yesterday um, and. Um, and one of the kind of cool things is they um, they are one of the leading providers of, of a of a fintech uh, health tech kind of platform uh, that effectively allows people to you know get uh, a cre- use their credit cards uh, for you know basically making purchases um, like band aids and things of that nature um, and that platform is is doing extremely well they they are basically the, the de facto uh, you know uh, you know kind of platform for all those transactions for for uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, which if you know anything about Blue Cross Blue Shield there's lots of blue crosses and blue shields, uh, but uh, the the uh, they were selected as this kind of default standard platform. So we're expecting some pretty massive growth uh, mm-hmm. out of those just based on that queue. Uh, but yeah, lots of lots of fun stuff, you know, all around. Um, you know, it's been uh, it's been very exciting. So. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that update, yep. Christian. We appreciate you coming on and, and speaking directly to our investors mm-hmm. um, this time. Are there any questions before Christian? Yep. pops off of the call here and we turn our focus back to real estate. I haven't seen anything come through yet, but I'll wait another yeah. One thing I'll share so. when we see if anyone has any questions, uh, you know, Christian, what you said about efficiency, that really resonates with me. So, uh, you know, our first, you know, financial services, you know, software, enterprise software startup um, was really geared towards uh, improving revenue collections and reducing float in the revenue life cycle in medical banking and and ultimately reducing the expenses of revenue processing. So it's all about, you know, increasing revenue, you know, reducing expenses, improving efficiency. And while we saw our, you know, banks and and hospitals were our core clients, while we saw them really cutting uh, in B2C business to consumer models, you're seeing, you know, layoffs at, you know, Facebook and uh, Amazon, that sort of thing, uh, Google, uh, while we were seeing those sorts of things happen in our industry, uh, there was a, a rush of customers to our door saying, hey, like, like what can we do to really strengthen, shore up our bottom line during this time of, of you know uncertainty? So you know our inception date was 2006, uh, and then ultimately you know we had a, a, a nine-figure exit nine years after that. So we you know lived through a time of, of uh, tremendous economic challenge, uh, but we never struggled uh, to to recruit and enroll new customers in that enterprise software segment because people were just so obsessed with efficiency and shoring up their bottom line during that during that time frame. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Christian, for being here today. Really appreciate that. And we will hop over to our real estate funds. All right. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. Let's go back through our dizzying amount of slides here. Okay. I'm going to try to. I hope y'all are. I hope you all are enjoying lunch or something fun while you're listening to us. We were saving the best for last too. So let's let's move fast. Someone here will answer some okay. questions even. 
All right. So jumping into Black Swan Real Estate Fund One, this was our $10 million fund. We raised $11 million in December of 2021. Our usual business model, no fees whatsoever. All of the profits go back to our investors until they're completely repaid. And then an infinite rate of return, a 50-50 split for an indefinite hold thereafter. Very exciting for fund one is Nicholas Apartments. So Nicholas and all of our apartments are two apartment buildings that are conjoined. We, we kind of shorthand them and call them Nicholas Apartments. This is the cornerstone of fund one. We acquired this on December 28th of 2021, and it has performed extraordinarily mm -hmm. well. We have yes. been so excited about you know, reviewing the performance of Nicholas every single month. Um, NOI at closing was 873,000. Our projected NOI was 979,000. And that was with very little renovation. Mm -hmm. So it was essentially through all management improvements and efficiencies there. And our actual year end NOI was 941,559. The difference there is that we did choose to renovate, renovate about 15 units. So we had some additional vacancy mm -hmm. and we just chose to do that to further push rents, provide even a, a better living experience for our residents, those those units we did had, we did lighter lighter touch ups. I'll, I'll say in in probably about forty units. So we had we, we had some vacancy loss during that time frame, uh, and then also had a had a tax escalation that we had penciled into our pro forma, but it was you know higher than we expected, which there's not much you can do about that. Uh, and we ended up landing in a really strong place, and uh, I think our NOI for for 2023 is going to be even you know much much stronger still. Uh, so we went from, you know, we had probably 20, 20 rent escalations for many of our, uh, uh, many of our units, especially the ones that we did larger renovations to. And, uh, you know, it takes a, a couple, it takes a couple of years to really realize the benefit from that. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So our Q4 rents for Nicholas were $147,000 per month, which was almost exactly completely stable with Q3. So what we're looking for there is that when we, when we escalate rents, that it stays stable, mm -hmm. that that isn't like some blip in the market or something um, that's unreproducible that, you know, we just have a stellar leasing agent that's doing the leasing or, you know, something like that, that we have consistent um, rents at that new escalated rent. And so we're very excited to see that that's been stable through Q3 and Q4. Um, let's talk about the, well, I'll, before I turn it over to you for the internet mm -hmm. upgrade, um, we are also across the board in our multifamily properties implementing a $75 per month utility yep. fee because many of these buildings have some sort of shared utilities, whether that's the heating and cooling, the electrical, the water, the sewer, obviously lawn and snow are, are provided for our apartment buildings. And it is a standard in, in our markets to have a utility fee. It's something we haven't done in the past, but we did market research. We worked with our leasing team. And so we've implemented this in November of 2022. And you know, per our leasing team, it has not had any mm -hmm. negative effects whatsoever on our ability to lease units. In fact, you know, potential residents are just asking about, okay, well, what's yeah. your utility fee? Because it's such a market norm. So we're excited to have that additional revenue, not only for Nicholas, but across all of our multifamily buildings. So again, just always thinking about what can we do to improve as a management company? What can we do to stay competitive? What can we do to differentiate ourselves? But what can we do to, to do what is the market norm mm -hmm. when there's a, a clear benefit there? So very excited about that. That was not at all in our pro forma no. No. when we acquired this building. And so it's just a, a completely new additional revenue stream to help offset the utility costs. And yeah. then let's talk about the internet yeah. package. Yeah. And just being to the utilities, when we bought Nicholas, Nicholas has like a space age heating and air conditioning system. Um, it's a, a, a heat pump system. Um, so we're able to heat and cool a unit for the entire year for probably 80% less than a like a conventional uh, heating and cooling technology. So like when the, the sun is rising in the morning, there's too much heat on the uh, east side of the building and not enough heat on the west side of the building is able to pump the heat over. And so building back for those utilities was an easy push here. And then uh, in terms of the internet, uh, we had spoken to this before, and uh, we're, we're able to make the internet 30 to 100 times faster through a really aggressive contract negotiation with the kind of top tier internet service provider, um, you know, by lumping all of our assets together in, in the funds into one bucket and, and having that kind of group buying power, essentially, we're able to, I mean, we had that provider in place already. Normally they would not, you know, up your speed this much, uh, you know, for a cost reduction, we're going from $55 a month to $35 a month. But just having that, uh, that group buying power is absolutely massive. Um, there's a, just an unfair advantage that you have in the, in the private equity fund. So just running through these numbers, we used to, you know, pay $55 per unit per month. And that's what we're charging is $55 per unit per month. 
Now we're only paying $35 per unit per month. So that's $20 of profit um, per unit. So $1,900 per month in profit or uh, $22,800 per year in you know, more or less guaranteed profit, uh, which increases the value of the building $456,000, achieving that just with a, a contract negotiation uh, with the internet. And this remediates, this costs nothing additional to our tenants. This is just a pure value add for our mm -hmm. tenants. And it addresses the number one complaint we received the building. The day we took over, we, we asked all the tenants as we were transitioning, what's your biggest pain point living here? And they said, the internet is so slow. And, and it was pretty slow. Um, and now it is the fastest internet in our market. We don't know another apartment building that offers internet this fast. So this might even result in like a rent premium. So we're really excited about this. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, there was a great question about our projections for our 2023 NOI. Um, will it exceed our, our projection? Um, Right now, we haven't done our exact modeling. We model that in the high part of the leasing season. So that starts in early March and goes through July. But our expectation, looking at how our leasing activity has been, is that we will we will continue to surpass our um, pro forma projections for each individual unit. Again, the, the NOI decrease from last year was because of the vacancy, because of our renovation. So on a per unit basis, we are far exceeding our pro forma and then we also have our utility fee, and then we also have this additional income from the internet. So our we don't have the official like NOI projection for 2023 yet, but it should be well over a million. Yep. Good question. Yep. Um, Fund One owns a portfolio of 30 single family homes. We've reported on these every quarter. At the end of Q3, beginning of Q4 was when we officially had acquired all of them, renovated all of them, and completed our cash out refi on all of them. So there was a, there was a full cycle of capital there. So very excited about that. They are all stabilized now. They are all rented. Our monthly rents are a little over 58000 per month for our single family home portfolio, which is just a little under 700000 per year annually um, with very little capital in these homes because we've already exercised our cash out refi and that freed up the liquidity for fund one to be able to acquire a portion of residents of Discovery Square. Ooh. Yeah, very exciting. Here's some pictures of the single family homes to give you some sense. We acquire pretty much everything from three bed, one baths to four bed, two baths. Everything has to have a garage, whether it's detached or attached. And then we have specific neighborhoods that we target in Rochester, but we were specifically looking for properties where we would have a value add opportunity so that we could exercise that cash out refi. Very pleased with our renovations. You can see, you know, there's a consistent look throughout all of our renovations, and that really speeds up our efficiencies, economies of scale, work with either our in-house maintenance staff or our third-party vendors that they know exactly what we want for all of our renovations and can just go from job site to job site. This is the first time I've actually seen this one. This is 43021st. That looks really good. I didn't know which one it was, so I'm I glad you. I'm glad you could tell I me. Recognize the door, and, and just the, it's kind of kind of small in there. That, that that looks really good. Yeah, I, mean. I was I was very pleased with this renovation. Yeah. So this would have been a very light renovation. Um, you know, likely just the the new appliances here and probably Socket pools switches, on the cabinets, yep. so socket switches, some light fixtures, um, but finding good high quality homes with good bones mm -hmm. and then doing a value add plan to them as well. Yep. You can see we love hardwood floors. We love LVP. Love bringing in lots of light. Mm -hmm. So our total rents for Fund One, um, a little over two million at two million eighty four thousand, and our total NOI was one million seventy six thousand. The NOI for the single family home portfolio was very blunted in twenty twenty two because we were acquiring them and then doing these deep value add renovations. So now that they are all um, renovated and leased our NOI will go up quite a bit. And then it's likely that we'll continue to acquire more single family homes for fund one as well to spend some of the capital. And, and just as a quick sanity check here, if you were able to put in uh, $11 million into a fund and get an NOI of about $1.1 million, you'd be at a 10 cap. So that's that's a, that's a, I hadn't thought of that's, that. a that's a really good number. So we're, we're, uh, we're doing pretty well. That's, so there's lots of ways you can you know, do fancy projections and stuff. And that's through deep value add renovations. That's through well. deep value. And uh, yeah. So um, just as like, like a quick little gut, gut check there, like, like we're in, we're in pretty good shape there. Yep. Absolutely. If, if you were to go buy an $11 million apartment building that produced 1.1 million of NOI, that would be the best deal on like an individual apartment building you'd ever get. 
Um, everything in the in fund one and in fund two is all fixed rate debt, and there's nothing above 5.15%. So I wanted to have a slide for that because that's a question that we get very frequently. Nick addressed mm -hmm. that, you know, close up to the beginning of our presentation as well. Lots of people getting debt north of 7% right now. I've been seeing some deals at 7.5% debt. Um, so that 5.15 as, as our highest interest rate, we're, we're in very good shape. Yep, absolutely. And then um, Nick Johnson, thank you for teeing up that question for me. Um, his question was, when are we projected to get capital back out? So fund one will have a distribution in quarter two. We don't have those specific numbers ready to share quite yet because we need to have the liquidity available for the 50% share of residences of Discovery Square. But we definitely will have a distribution in Q2. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Of course, that will go out in the newsletters and the Q2 update and then also through the Invest Next portal updates as well. So please do go to the Invest Next portal if you're able to, you know, right now while you're thinking about it blackswan.investnext.com and make sure your bank information is in there so that when we do that distribution in Q2, that automatically gets deposited right into your bank account. We are super excited to be able to deliver on our projections that we would have a distribution in the sixth quarter after the fund opened. And that's exactly what's happening because we've done this so many times. We've done deep value add renovations. We know that it takes about a year to stabilize things, another quarter or so just to let things settle in the bank account, you know, decide what we need for capital reserves and then have a distribution. That's exactly what happened for fund one. Mm -hmm. So, and you guys are going to be excited. I don't want to share the number, but it'll be good. Y'all are going to be excited. <laughs> we'll, we'll get off to a running start. Yeah. All right. So that is fund one. Now we're in between fund one and fund two. So residences of Discovery Square will be owned 50% by fund one and 50% by, by fund two. That's because of the deal size. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a $27 million deal, and then we're doing additional construction to it. So fund one is only an $11 million fund, already has a, a $25 million deal in it with Nicholas and Oliver. And then fund two is a $30 million fund, but already owns a number of assets, several of them quite large. And so we just wanted to share the risk and the reward across those two funds and have the liquidity available from both of them. So that's why this is this will be a 50-50 deal. Nick has been just working his heart yeah. out on RDS, yeah. you know, probably four hours a day, yeah. um, planning for the construction, everything. So sure. I'll let you share the updates. Yeah, there. you know, depending on how things go, you know, the deal just kind of keeps getting incrementally better the more we work on it. Uh, this will probably be the best deal we've ever done, uh, plain, plain and simply. Uh, we're going to assume in-place debt at 2.37%. Uh, you know, compared to getting debt at seven and a half percent in the in the market, you know that that can that can be a, a huge thing that, that swings your deal. Um, you know, we're doing a contract for deed, so we're only going to put uh, three million dollars down on a on a twenty seven million dollar deal. Uh, normally, to acquire a deal this size, you might need to put like four or five times that much capital down. That's kind of the, the debt that we're seeing in the marketplace right now. Uh, and then we're going to drive value add on top of that. So I think we've got a couple of slides. So these these are what the existing finishes mm -hmm. look like. Um, you know, very nice class A finishes. Exactly. Looks what just like Nicholas. Looks just like Nicholas. That's <laughs> right. We uh, we love uh, Nicholas and we love to have more of those has, you know, Magic Pack, HVAC, Granite Counters, um, you know, kind of just premium fun, uh, hip modern finishes. This is an urban core location. This is a big old beast of a building. It's an entire city block. Yeah, I'll go back uh, just to that a, first picture so you just get a, some sense of, yeah, just take a look street, at how many cars are lined up street there. Street to street to street to street. is, yeah. And it's right up against uh, Soldier's Field, which is going to to be probably the nicest outdoor living space in the entire state of Minnesota in the next five years. Just an insane value-add park that we're doing there, that not we're doing, that the city is doing there. Well, we are contributing a lot of property taxes. Oh, yeah. Perhaps, <laughs> so we're, we, will, we will actually build that park. Um, so this is a real key piece of it. So the whole main floor is commercial, uh, commercial space with, with four or five stories residential on top, mixed use. And this building came online in December 2019. And in that time, that commercial space has not been filled which makes it kind of hard to fill the residential space. You walk into like a little bit of a ghost town of a, of a you know, like a, like a shopping mall almost when you walk in. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill up about two thirds of that space with urban lofts. We've talked to, you know, people throughout the country who've done somewhat similar things before. No one's ever done something quite like this before. I think we're doing something pretty cool and pretty special. Uh, we're going to do premium finishes with industrial kind of finishes. So exposed concrete ceilings, concrete pillars, steel beams, um, but, you know, uh, three centimeter quartz counters, uh, you know, if you're familiar with our Stonehaven product, this will be a notch even above that. Um, so very premium finishes in these uh, in these loss units. Just got off the phone with the architect, you know, right before our, uh, our Elaine was like, I, I was like, Nick, Nick. I, I'm always, <laughs> always on the phone. Yeah. 
Um, so we were up to 12 and 13. I think we might get all the way up to 14 units. Um, so here's one of the one of those floor plans. You'll have kind of a main floor. Uh, what what's technically a work live space? You could technically like run a business on that main floor, or have like a you know like a little one man law office, and then you know sleep and and have kind of your personal space in that mezzanine loft area. I think these are going to be really just knockout gorgeous units that'll get a, a steep premium on rent. As most importantly, going to fill up that building, and uh, I think we'll put in kind of like an art gallery around those units to kind of give you like a little bit of a transition from a commercial to a residential vibe. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, one idea lined up for kind of like a, a, our anchor main floor commercial tent. We're going to leave four of the 22 bays available for commercial uh, build out. Um, this is, this is a monster project. That's just, it's going to be a really strong project. Our, our projections are, I mean, we'll hit a, a probably a 15% cash on cash rate of return within, you know, 12 months of acquisition. And we could hit as much as like a five, zero percent, 50%, uh, you know, annualized rate of return uh, in the first couple of years of the deal as well. So we're really excited about this deal. Um, and we're really excited to have, you know, two funds we can split this up with because it is a big old deal. So it's really nice to just just diversify that risk, essentially, mm -hmm. um, and, and also, you know, diversify that upside between the two funds. So we're very excited about that. Yep. Um, there are somewhat similar units at another apartment community in town here in Rochester that has townhome units like this. And their rents that they are actively achieving are six thousand per month. In our pro forma, we only wrote in three thousand mm -hmm. per month. So there's a yep. huge spread there. That even with our you know, rather handicapped numbers that we put into our calculator, you know, we still are getting you know the projections that Nick just shared there. And then it's it's likely that we'll come in well above three thousand when we're you know when we're comparing to what what is out there in the market. But we've never leased something quite mm -hmm. like this. So that, that yep. that's how we do our underwriting. Is we tend to be you know hopelessly conservative and yes. really ask ourselves. If kind of the worst case scenario happened, what would the numbers look like? And then if those look good, then we choose to move forward on a deal. And then everything above that is, is you know, just better return, better outcome. So just so excited about residents of Discovery Square. This, this deal fits the mold of all of the best deals we've ever done, which is we're walking into the deal. Multiple people have looked at the deal and said, you know, there's some challenges here. And, and multiple people have kind of failed to solve these problems in the past. And when we look at it, we say, gosh, I'm pretty sure we can solve these problems. Like we're going to spend millions of dollars on these build outs. We're going to, you know, change a lot of things about the management of the building and turn it from, you know, it's kind of, kind of a little uh, odd to walk into a vacant shopping mall, basically to get into your unit to a really bustling kind of uh, th thriving living space. And we know that that's going to drastically improve rents in the building and the, and, and vacancy and just the leaseability of the building uh, in addition to, to generating revenue. So when we look at it, we see this like incredible blank slate. We're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to spend 150 K per unit to build these units. And they're going to be worth like 300,000 a unit. Like you usually have, you know, a five, 10% margin on new construction. We're going to have a 100% margin on new construction. Just, you know, we just see something that other people don't see. So that that's, that's the story of this building is just taking something that has struggled for years through multiple mm -hmm. management groups. And, and we have, you know, really good certainty that we can just completely change the game on this asset, but we're penciling in really conservative assumptions just, just in case we're wrong, just in case we, we can merely do incrementally better than the previous management groups. Yep. And those of you that are familiar with Destination Medical Center, if you're not, you should learn about it because it's just a fascinating thing about city planning, urban development, dmc.mn, Destination Medical Center, um, to Discovery Square is well within walking distance of residents of Discovery Square. That's why that's why mm -hmm. this building has the name is one Discovery Square, yep. two Discovery Square. It's in the same location. Yep, bringing in tons of jobs, um, really lots of collaboration with Mayo Clinic. Very excited about the future of this yeah. building. Yeah, nationwide office occupancy is fifty percent. By the way, so if this goes well, I mean, we could go buy like an office building and do another loft build out. This could be a whole new line of business for us. So we bought an office building, yeah. turned it into a school. We did. <laughs> we did forty thousand square foot office building. We could yeah. turn into a school yeah. in these past years. So. I, I misspoke. We're we are under contract to acquire the building. Yes. Um, Black Swan Real Estate Fund Two. Um, that was, you know, our big project for 2022. We filled fund two. We hit exactly 30 million. Thank you so much to, to everyone that invested in fund two. Um, it was it was a joy to be able to to work with you all to steward your capital through a rather challenging time in the economy. Interest rates were high. Stock market was just decimated mm -hmm. throughout 2022. Lots of investor fear, and so we're just you know we're always grateful for investor dollars, yep. but particularly when we know you know there's fear and uncertainty. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve you and grateful for the opportunity to fill the fund. Very Absolutely. excited. Yep. 
Um, same structure as fund one, except it's larger, $30 million fund. Yep. These are our acquisitions in fund two. We'll go through our updates for these. Tanara Villa, residences of Old City Hall, Hamptons, Douglas, Riverview, Garfield, and then residents of Discovery Square we've already it's covered. It's a list. It is, yeah, yeah. It's growing. All right. So it looks like we're looking at Douglas Trail here. We're um, really just speaking about our overall renovations, okay. the, the crazy number yeah, of renovations. Is, yeah. So if you'll believe it, we only have two full-time construction managers that are running this and we have 71 job sites going at one point. Uh, it is carefully orchestrated chaos. This is the advantage of working with the same contractors over and over and over again is, is they know which kind of flooring we put in. They know what kind of wall paint we use. So we just say, yep, add this one to the list. And they love the consistent work and we love the consistent outcomes at the absolute best prices. We pay the same amount for flooring that DR Horton pays for flooring. We get national home builder pricing on our materials. When you're running 71 concurrent job sites, I mean, DR Horton's doing more, more flooring than we're doing. Let's be clear about that. But we're we're in the same league, mm -hmm. which is which is kind of crazy. We actually have to. We just had someone at a trade show, a, a home builders trade show last week in Vegas. Uh, one of our construction managers, and it's kind of hard to explain. No, no, we're a property management company, but but we do a little bit of construction. So yes, we're going to need the national home builder pricing here. Uh, just a crazy amount of renovations. We're we're adding massive value on an incredible scale. So Tarville Apartments, uh, you know, we've gone through a few of these numbers before, but uh, basically taking, uh, you know, a, a classic unrenovated apartment building uh, that's a half a century old that just hasn't seen some love really ever and uh, converting it into something totally different. We have to pull permits for our landscaping on this project because we are doing so much. It's We're going to spend seven figures just on the landscaping alone in this mm -hmm. asset. We're going to totally reimagine what it is. Um, in place uh, lease rate was 925 a month. And this is in Tacoma, Washington, 1.6 miles from one of the nicest master plan communities in the entire country. So the, the rent rates were a little on the low side. Um, after a light rehab, we went from 925 to 1525. From 925 to 1525, a staggering spread. Um, we're you know focusing on the the low-hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. So in just a couple of days, one of our you know in-house crews can go in and, and do paint and light fixtures and stuff. And, and we'll do a second pass to go get the cabinetry and you know gut remodels on the kitchen, bathroom, corridor painting. Uh, we have renovations underway at 11 units. Two units are uh, fully renovated. And uh, we sent out a, or we had a few videos that I think we shared those videos in, in Q3. Yeah, walking yep. through kind of like a messy middle on those two units. Uh, we have an architect that's a, and, and landscape designer working on landscaping stuff. There's some of our um, pictures, some of yep. our renovations. We're retrofitting washers and dryers. We're, you know, we're ripping out, uh, we're, we're trying to preserve the existing cabinet boxes because they're really high quality boxes, you know, doing new uh, finish and, and face on them um, with, uh, you know, stone counters, uh, you know, just top of the line renovations all around. This is going to be unrecognized when we get done. Mm -hmm. Here's the uh, preliminary sketch of uh, some of the architect's plans and, and uh, landscape design architect's plans uh, for these common areas. So going from basically like a giant vacant lawn that people literally are parking their cars on to uh, just an incredible uh, lush area that people are just going to love to hang out in, in kind of the verdant, uh, you know, Tacoma market. And play, and play pickleball. Oh, yes. Yep. <laughs> everyone, everyone wants a pickleball court. That's the hot amenity right now. Do we have more more pictures here? No. OK, well, yeah. well there's a few more uh, that, that didn't make it in the slideshow of, um, you know, a nice kind of indoor outdoor transition. Um, the, the club room for this asset had a beautiful 17 inch television from like 1990. Uh, with a library of VHS cassettes and a VHS cassette player. So we're upgrading that amenity stack a little bit uh, with a state-of-the-art fitness center and uh, and lounge and theater room. And it's just going to be it's just going to be incredible. We had a, a comprehensive update of a different community that we own and operate in Tacoma, Washington, that's not part of either of the funds. It precedes the funds um, called Garden Court West. Rachel sent out an email probably I don't know, maybe six or eight weeks ago with updates on Garden Court West. So Rachel, if you could please maybe mm -hmm. find the exact subject line of that email and pop it into chat so that maybe folks who haven't seen that could search their email to pull that up. That had some drone footage, some really lovely photos, basically the, the exact business plan that we're doing at Garden Court West, just a few miles from Tanara. We're doing over at Tanara, so you'll get a sense of what a, a closer to finished product looks like. Uh, Garden Court West has about another year of renovation to go, but you'll at least be able to see what the landscaping will like, which is really exciting. It's just, it's a beautiful way to 
you know, improving units is, is wonderful, but it really only impacts, you know, the one person or the one family that lives in that unit. But being able to create these really beautiful shared living spaces really changes what that living experience is like. It goes from being an apartment that someone lives in to really, truly a community that someone lives in. That's been our favorite thing about doing these very large um, landscaping projects mm -hmm. in, in Tacoma. All right, Douglas Trail. Um, this is a 100 unit townhome community just a few miles away from us here in Rochester. It's a section 42 affordable housing community. We acquired this um, in late 2022 for the same price that the sellers had acquired it in 2017. So very excited about our purchase price mm -hmm. during you know, a time when the market is yep. you know, very, very challenging to get a deal period, let alone to get a deal with a purchase price that was the same purchase price from five years ago. Fixed rate debt. Um, we have a, a projected 17% cash on cash rate of return, you know, just right, right from the get go. We are doing quite a bit of renovation here to even further improve that and to, to really, you know, get the maximum amount of value from this community and to provide an exceptional living experience mm -hmm. for our residents that, you know, folks who live in affordable communities, they want to have nice yes. amenities as well. And that that's not typically been the norm around the country. And so we're excited to have this proof of concept to show that it's very possible to renovate um, affordable housing communities and to you know continue to provide affordable housing but to provide a product that everyone wants we out of 100 units there we have already turned over 30 units so it's been just an incredible transition uh, project which on, on townhomes is a little bit easier it's you know it's almost impossible to do it on an apartment building because it's just the logistics of so many contractors in and out of corridors and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and the the impact we've been able to make on people's lives has just been absolutely incredible it's probably the project i'm actually most excited about in fund two we, we drive through it every saturday every sunday yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> i don't know how that became our routine after church we go swing through douglas trail and it just it gets a little bit nicer each week it's mm -hmm. just uh, you know, we bought, it's a community that it needed a lot of TLC. And so it's, it, we're able to move the needle so fast on that community. We just uh, got our preliminary bid for our fitness center. Uh, I mean, going from a community that w literally just, there was trash everywhere to a community that has a top of the line fitness center. Uh, it's, it just, I don't know, it, it makes me feel really good to, to see that, that transition in progress in that community. Absolutely. Um, there you can see our renovation. So we kept the counters and cabinets. We added all new pools, all Looks new appliances, good. new faucet, and then all new flooring throughout, taking out the carpet and putting in your signature LVP. People love LVP. Yeah. You know, even, even people without pets love LVP, but particularly that we are, you know, the most pet-friendly property management company in town. There's just LVP throughout and just looks clean and bright and, and people love it. And the, the appliances are just amazing. We're, we're doing these turns in like uh, 14 days right now. These are incredibly fast turns. We've really got it dialed in. Yeah, we we like people are calling faster than we can can yeah. renovate these. Yeah. Like, okay, yours will be renovated on X day, and you can move in move in yeah. the next day. It, it definitely puts a little little fire under under yeah. our renovation crews. Yep. Um, next up is the River View. Um, so this was a five million dollar purchase price. Ironically, we acquired this one for the same price that the seller acquired it for in 2017, completely unrelated. It's just a, a complete coincidence. But just to speak to the fact that we were able to acquire some really good deals in 2022, you know, despite how hot the market was at that time. Mm -hmm. um, these have been operated as short-term rentals, and that's not part of our business model. We find that here in Rochester, we actually have better financial outcomes mm -hmm. from long-term rentals. Um, so we had a plan to you know, just allow the people that were you know, in those short-term leases to you know, finish out their stay and then vacate them. So we're renovating all of the units very quickly. Um, and there is our finished product. Um, so 20 units have already Staggering. been renovated I think 90 days yeah yeah, yeah I, I think I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head what our exact close date yeah. was but I want to say it was like October 28th or, yeah don't quote me on that guys time moves really quickly but it was it was yeah so it's 90 days yeah. it was definitely very late it's in crazy. 2022 I, I mean I was personally supervising this job site at different points because uh so again having so many contractors there we had to dispose all these furnishings we tried to keep them out of a landfill so we had a like a like a free day essentially we brought in a select you know group of people uh that also run short terms and stuff so they they're 
trucks and trailers and stuff hauling mattresses and dressers out and um you know which which reduces the cost to the fund to dispose of all that stuff and then and then keeps that stuff out of the landfill mm -hmm. so we've got our literally like our flooring guys carrying in pallets of flooring as people are carrying out couches and armoires it's, it's a lot of fun it's, there's it's, just a lot of energy yeah, you know yeah. that, that comes from all of this it's incredible in the like negative 10 degree weather in the negative 10 degree weather we're we're doing this in the middle of a minnesota winter too that's another because yeah. we want we want to have all these units ready for the high season right so we're starting to have like a like significant vacancy we've got a lot of uh, physical vacancies for all these units that are down for rehab and they're all going to be ready for showtime for the peak of the high season because in about 30 days we're going to have the match mm -hmm. uh for for residency and all of a sudden uh just just everyone comes out of the woodwork looking for a place to lease and we're gonna we're gonna be ready for them with a whole portfolio of freshly renovated properties yeah we're so excited um so the the riverview structure is our original acquisition was 39 of the 63 units this this is a, a community that has an hoa and so we've worked through um acquiring more units to to date right now we've acquired an additional six units so we have a super majority of the hoa and we're professionalizing the hoa the end goal is that we own all of the units and that the, the HOA ceases to exist and it's run as just a, a normal apartment building. So we're working toward that. Um, and then you can see our renovations there. So same LVP, same light fixtures. Um, we kept the cabinets in this one, put in a new appliance package and just, just really pleased with, with how mm -hmm. the renovation here turned out. Yep. Residences of Old City Hall. This is a fun one. So this is the former City Hall of Rochester that was uh, converted into an apartment building when the City Hall upgraded to a you know much larger, more modern government center. And uh, 5.15 million purchase price. Uh, the seller carried half of that purchase price as a no interest, no payment seller carry loan uh, for five years. So we have about two and a half million dollars of debt on this with no interest, no payments for five years. Um, we, we've been able to basically match up our new renovation finishes with kind of the original historic character of the building. So when they did the adaptive reuse 20 years ago, they did an amazing job on the mechanicals and everything, but the, the finishes, like the color palette and everything didn't really match up with kind of the historic character of the building and, and just look a little bit dated today. So we're, you know, as like a beige paint scheme, well, the original terrazzo floors and marble wainscoting was a, a white gray paint scheme that works really well for today's kind of preferred color palette. And that's moving the needle in a huge way on rental rates. So I think our, our first unit, yeah, we went from 1600 in place. Uh, I, I forget what was on our pro forma. I think it was like 1900. Yeah, 1900 on our pro forma. We went to 2100. And that was in December when it like just no one leases anything in December. You get really depressed rental rates. These are just, this is like our coolest building in our whole portfolio. Like you mm -hmm, walk in mm -hmm. and it, you, you know you're in this 100 year old, beautiful, classy, historic building. This is one of the few buildings where I just go, visit it i just go like hang out in it one of the few one of the few Nick, here you visit all the buildings all oh. the time <laughs> but it's neat like you're saying i know this one is special it, it is special yeah it's, it's in a really cool place with lots of restaurants lots of it's very walkable walkable to mayo i find myself um, nearby often yep it's very close to um rds yes it's about it's about a city block away from residences yep. of discovery square so we've got one rehab uh active six complete two upcoming out of 22 units so uh kind of a perfect pacing for uh, for our renovations on this uh, this building couldn't be happier with our outcome so far a smaller deal that's in fund two is hampton townhomes just a 1.5 million dollar purchase price this really speaks to our agility as yep. local operators boots on the ground you know, a typical private equity fund would not have the interest or the ability to acquire something this small but it fits really well right into our buy box because we can acquire it we can manage it we can renovate it um, so this is just um, 12 units. You can see there the, the before product. 25% um, of the purchase price was carried on this one with no interest and no payments for three years. So not only is our bank financing low fixed rate debt, but when you blend it together with the 0% mm -hmm. interest rate, like you'd have to like run the formula for each one, but our blended interest rates are well below 5% mm -hmm. because we have a, a chunk of seller carries on all of the deals in fund two that are no interest, no payments. I hadn't thought about that. RDS, the seller's carrying a portion at 0%. So our blended rate on RDS is below, uh, all, all below 2%. Yep. All of our, all of our deals here in Rochester have yeah. some portion of a 0% seller carry. Um, there's our renovation. So you can see time and time Ooh. again, new faucet, new light fixtures, new appliances, new pools on the cabinets, new flooring, new paint. 
you can see that consistent quality. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine too, think of, think of yourself if you were a prospective renter. Mm -hmm. So maybe you come into to this and you say, you know what, this is actually, I don't know, a little further away from the kid's school than I anticipated, or, you know, it's too big or, you know, whatever the concern is, you're able to look at just a few properties and then have a sense of, well, they all generally look the same. Obviously there's unique characteristics for each building, but it really streamlines our efficiency and our resident satisfaction and our prospective resident satisfaction to be able to look at just a few units across different communities and then have a sense that this is what all of the Black Swan living properties would look like and then be able to choose from there. We've completed five of the renovations, so about halfway through um, and doing really well. This one will be a really quick turn of the capital, just a way to speed up the velocity of a small amount of capital in fund two while we're you know, moving bigger mountains with things like RDS to NARA. Garfield Apartments was our last acquisition of the year in fund two. I think we closed on December. One, one day 20, to spare or something like that. Yeah. Um, Nick and I were, were traveling and had to have a remote notary come to, to do our closing documents. This is in Tacoma, Washington, just a few miles away from Tanara Villa. And I'll let you speak yeah. to this deal. This is a, such a cool deal, such such incredibly cool deal. So it was a $5 million purchase price. Um, you know, mix of, of commercial and, and apartments and our, our, you know, goal basically is to, um, you know, improve the, the commercial and then probably probably sell off the, the commercial assets. We could entitle them to be redeveloped as apartment buildings, which is probably highest and best use for this site, uh, and then sell that for, for premium there. Uh, we, we kind of minimize the commercial space like, um, and, and then the, the, the key piece of this is we got 100% seller financing. At 80% LTV, 5%. So kind of a, a favorable, but not, you know, it's not a 0% seller carry, but the seller carry is going to allow us to sell off the commercial space and not not, not put those proceeds towards towards the seller carry, which, uh, which a, a bank would not normally allow. So that's going to allow us to return capital very, very, very quickly on this deal and still retain that, you know, very favorable seller carry. And, and this is just how you can make, you know, so this seller, they owned a parking lot, a couple commercial buildings, this mixed use building in this really desirable area, but had not renovated them in decades. Um, so they need a lot of TLC. It's just, it's this the perfect deal for creativity. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like, we're gonna be able to make some some pretty astonishing returns happen with, uh, with this particular deal with that creativity. You can see here that Garfield is, you know, kind of the, the least, least good looking kid yeah. on the block. Yeah. Um, and that's why we wanted it because yeah. we know it's in a great area and uh, an area that's transitioning and that with our renovations and our management improvements, we'll be able to have it match the community, mm -hmm. which serves the community, serves the residents. And then obviously the, you know, not only are we putting in improvements to that community, but the neighborhood mm -hmm. is putting in improvements. So we're able to, you know, kind of ride yeah. that, that rising wave there. And if we entitle the adjacent vacant land before we sell it, then that means a really beautiful class A apartment building is going to go up next door, which again, further increases the value of our, our real estate. So there's just so many ways to win with this really unique property. Mm -hmm. um, those are all of the updates for our properties specifically. Um, Zach asked an excellent question that kind of fits in perfect right at the end of our property specific um, updates here. So what is the timeline projection for complete 100% of turn of capital for fund one and fund two? So what we say for all of our joint ventures, our funds is that we tell people to plan for a five-year time frame. Historically, it has never taken more than three years, but we're big believers in having very conservative projections. When I look at, you know, fund, fund one is a year older than fund two, so it's easier to see kind of that, that future projection there. But when I look at both fund one and fund two, we're still well within that. Yeah. I would anticipate sometime around three to four years. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then let's talk about some of our updates for Black Swan Living. Um, so this is the property management company that manages all of our assets. You know, that vertical integ integration piece is such a huge part of our operational excellence, our management, being able to increase rents, decrease expenses, all of the things that go into creating these high quality living experiences for residents that in turn generates these high return for our investors. Take it away. Yeah, um, we, uh, you know, ha having the privilege of, of growing two startups from, you know, z 
not zero, but from you know five or ten employees to to 100 employees twice before. Um, it, it, each time you do it, you get faster at it. The first one took nine years. The second one took three years, and this one is is more like almost a, a two year time frame. It, it's uh, it's it's really incredible how quickly we've been able to grow this company and just build a phenomenal team. That's the thing that we've learned over and over again. Is anytime we can put uh, put our team in front of people, everyone's just blown away with the quality of our team. Um, we are a, a property management first organization, uh, doing the hard work of, of of bringing these vertical integration pieces in house, maintenance and cleaning, and, um, and and it gives us an incredible amount of control. So so just as an example of that, like we brought tree trimming in house, mm-hmm. and I remember there was one property where we got a, a fifteen hundred dollar bid for tree trimming. We do a lot of tree trimming across all our properties, and uh, you know that was kind of like the the breaking point with Elaine and I. And we're like, okay, we're gonna go you know get the insurances and do the training and and then buy the equipment. Uh, and that's a cost that we have to shoulder inside of our property management company. And then, and then we charge back for those services. And, uh, and, and I remember, you know, I didn't, I didn't kind of share this with anyone. I wanted to just, you know, blindly see what, what the cost spread was. And it was $150 for us to do the tree trimming on that property that had the $1,500 bid. Cause when you, when you hire the tree trimming service, they want to cut everything. Right. And when you send out your guys with the proper equipment and training, uh, they're like, well, we, we just have to like trim this one limb and throw it in the back of the truck and move on. And, you know, it's like takes two guys one hour and and they're gone. So it's a 90% cost reduction to your asset. Now, you know, how much tree trimming does any one asset need in, in, in one year? Not much, but across all of our assets, it's a stag. I mean, we were paying like $75,000 in tree trimming services and we we're able to reduce that by probably about 75%. It's just, just an incredible savings. So that the vertical integration piece, you, you really can't overstate how, mm-hmm. how unique that is. I don't know anybody else that does in-house tree trimming in the you know real estate price private equity space. Um, and then, you know, we, we raise our own capital, you know, so we're not a private equity fund that's just placing this, this, this capital with various other operators that we don't, you know, have like a, a personal relationship with. Um, you know, we, we had our real estate real life conference and um, I, I love the the feel. It felt like a, uh, I don't know, like a really classy family reunion or it felt like I got to marry Elaine all over again, mm-hmm. uh, like a wedding reception. Now, now our first wedding was a very humble ceremony. So this was a much, much fancier wedding than our, our first wedding, but um, just all those different pieces. It's I, I love to see the way we're growing. Uh, there was seven people, uh, I think, at our last company retreat, which was 14 or 15 months ago or something like that. And we had 23 or something like that at this one. It was great. Yeah, so we had our year-end retreat in December with every single member of our team. We're really always thinking about what can we do to make sure that we're transmitting the culture, our standards, our core values, the way we communicate with, with everyone. Um, so very excited to have the opportunity to have everyone together. As we get bigger and bigger, we have fewer of those opportunities. So we've been through several startups together before. We're familiar with this trajectory mm-hmm. of, of management that needs to happen as we grow our team and excited to see that unfold with Black Swan Living. Um, so that was our team. We had a, a great day of teaching for about eight hours at the Hilton, going over our company history, who we are, why we exist, how we're adding value to our residents and our investors, and then most importantly, where we're going for the future. And then we had a lovely, um, just really good time at a local brewery for a Christmas party together. This is the team you know that serves you. This is yes. the team that that generates the value, yes. that takes on you know value add projects that, quite frankly, no one else would be crazy enough to do. But because of that vertical integration piece, because of the ownership piece, it makes sense for us to take on these very challenging, deep value add projects. And so just just so grateful to our team um, yes. and their the, the service that they have to all of our investors every single day. Tell them to Rochester and meet them. They're really wonderful. Yep. Um, this was super fun. So we had the opportunity to be interviewed for the Post Bulletin, which is our local paper um, here in Rochester. It was a really nice time to talk about our history, about where we are today, about the vision that we see. Um, so if we are not already, we will soon be the largest housing provider in all of southeastern Minnesota. And the reason I say it that way is that we don't exactly know the numbers for all of the other housing providers, but we have some sense. And so we know with one or two more acquisitions, we will definitely you know, cross into that milestone. We think we're already there. Um, and it was it was just a, a really lovely time to, you know, have the paper say that 2022 was the year of the Black Swan. Yeah.
there's the conference that, that Nick talked about. Really lovely time leaning into our brand colors, black, gold, and red, having the opportunity to network with investors, do real estate teaching all day, really digging in into you know, wealth creation and what do our investors want and why do they want this wealth? What does it mean to them? What does it look like for their future, for their children, their hobbies, their charitable giving, and then having an opportunity to tour properties, um, unlike anything else really in the industry, to, mm -hmm. to go into a pre-renovated projects, mid-renovated projects, post-renovations, to you know get to walk and touch and see the assets where people's capital are, is going. Just a really lovely time. And then that picture there um, is with the Mayo Brothers, the statues right outside of the Mayo Clinic. Just love also having the opportunity to share the excellence and the culture of Mayo Clinic. We're so blessed that we both had the opportunity mm -hmm. to work and to serve at the Mayo Clinic and to take a lot of their values. You know, one of their core values is the needs of the patient comes first. And we just replicated that in our private equity fund and said the needs of our investors mm -hmm. come first. And we've built everything around that. And so just love to have the opportunity to share that with visitors to Rochester. And in, in most private equity funds, like the goal is kind of to keep your investor at an arm's length. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't want your investor to come out and see the assets that are being invested in because they might say, hey, the the landscaping needs to be touched up or I didn't like this thing. And so we literally hosted a conference for everyone, investors or non-investors, to come out and just see the good that their money has done in Main Street. We love taking money out of Wall Street and putting in Main Street. And, and here is a, an apartment building that needed some TLC desperately. And, and, and look at the good that your money has done. And we want to hear your feedback. If you don't like the paint color, you know, that now is the forum to, to tell us. So the, the extreme transparency, I mean, it's right there. We, we led our, our webinar today with those values. Uh, we practiced that in, in the conference itself. And uh, that, that was probably one of the highlights of the whole year for me. Absolutely. And then immediately after that, I think it was like that Monday or Tuesday after we finished, we team. came in and we said to our team, okay, we're going to do that all again. It was so successful. Let's a, do it again. In about three weeks. In three weeks. Um, so about three weeks later, we had what we are calling our operator summit. So the folks here are all fellow real estate operators around the country, had the opportunity to come to Rochester so that we could teach about our operations and really ask them to serve us by saying, what do you see mm -hmm. that we're doing well? And most importantly, what do you see that we could improve? What are you doing differently um, that we could be doing to improve? So it was just just a great time to be with fellow professionals and to collaborate and to share so that we can really make an impact together on housing across the entire country. We're all in different markets. We're all doing different but similar things. We have since had our second operator summit already here in January, specifically focused on new construction, since that's such a big part of Black Swan's future in the near term here. Um, but it was just a just a great time to to collaborate with fellow operators. Yeah, we had we had the most successful real estate investor I have ever heard or personally know uh, come visit us. Uh, it was just such an honor to to have such a such a, an elite uh, special person come visit and and just hear feedback, offer feedback to to them, uh, and 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 to hear feedback on how we can improve our operations, improve the the quality of the product that we create. Um, and this is just a really fun, you know, just again, practicing a tra extreme transparency way to share value and, and a way to, to improve. We took the show on the road um, by speaking at and sponsoring the Passive Income MD Conference Real Estate or Financial Freedom Through Real Estate Investing. Um, it was myself, Nick, Stephanie, Rachel, and Riley, and Mark had the opportunity to go to L.A., to meet our investors, serve our investors. It really felt like, like a big family reunion. Yeah. Um, had the opportunity to see many people that maybe we haven't seen since before COVID, to meet many people that we've only had the opportunity to connect with virtually. It was just a, a really lovely time. Thank you to everyone that had the opportunity to visit us at our booth. We have several conferences coming up this year where we are speaking um, and so excited to meet many of you at those. I know Nick will be at best ever. Um, we are speaking at the Multifamily Investor Nation Conference in in June, and we are speaking at the Limitless Conference in June, and we have submitted an application to speak at Bigger Pockets. so cross your fingers for us, um, but just you know, continuing to get out there and to teach and to serve and then also have an opportunity to meet all of you. Mm -hmm. For some of the local things that we did here in Rochester, um, we sponsored Dogs Downtown. So, Dogs Downtown. Yeah, so we are the, the, the most pet-friendly property management company in Rochester. That goes all the way back to our origin story of when Nick and I tried to find housing when we had three German Shepherds 
and just essentially weren't able to. And so we had to buy a house sight unseen at a time that was you know, really quite challenging. We were already moving for residency. We had just had our first daughter. We were not you know, very sophisticated real estate investors back then. So that was a big leap. And our property management company was really born to, to, to solve that pain and so the city of Rochester has a really lovely time where dogs are welcomed to downtown and there's vendors like dog walkers, veterinarians, pet food companies, those sorts of things. Um, we have the, the exclusive rights as the property management company. We have, a, I think, a five-year agreement with Dogs Downtown to be the only property management company that can sponsor this, this um, community thing and just had a, a great time. Saw, you know, saw lots of existing tenants. I thought we'd like lease a bunch of units. I don't, I mean, I didn't know what to expect, but that you know, no one goes to a dog's downtown event to shop for housing, but we had a ton of existing residents, people who were passionate about their pets. Said, oh, Black Swan, I'm so glad I get to live yeah. in your house. It's yeah, amazing. it was just so fun. And the swag is just so fun. If you have a chance to, to look at the picture there, there's little like chew toys and a little collapsible dog water bowl, like just, just really fun stuff to really be, you know, invested not only in our buildings, but in our community and really thinking about what can we do as a property management company to benefit the residents living in our buildings and then also the community as a whole. And especially now, you know, that we're crossing or have already crossed that mark as being the largest housing mm-hmm. provider in Southeastern Minnesota, really feeling like we have a, a sacred obligation to yes. have stewardship I'm getting all choked up. I always do. I wanted uh, to. It's just, it's just so fun. We're I, just. I we're, want to have a dog parade. Uh, that was like this insane, I don't know, vision thing that I threw out a few years back. And then sometime thereafter, you know, we we found out there was a, you know, not a dog parade, but but dogs downtown. It's like, oh, we get the we get the yeah. dog parade. Super fun. Um, and then we also got to rescue Santa. So one of the fun things about residences of Old City Hall is that Santa has landed on the roof and then is rescued by the fire, fire department. stuck on the roof. I think this is like a 30-year tradition in Rochester. Just a fun time right after Thanksgiving, have the community together. Um, that's the mayor there at the bottom in her white jacket. Um, this is Nick and Stephanie Gareth and our youngest son, Abram. And that's Nick up there on the roof with Santa. Um, just, just such a delight to, again, have, you know, have an opportunity to be a part of a, a big celebration in Rochester. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. We did a number of resident uh, appreciation events this year and vendor appreciation events, um, just pouring back into you know the communities that we have the pleasure to serve and that that serve us. You know our, the relationships that we have with our investors. This bottom picture here in the corner, those are our two oldest children, Sela and Shepard. Um, they had a day off of school because of weather. And I took them around to several of our apartment communities and we passed out Christmas cards and they look they look joyful here because this is a building that has interior hallways. But we went to one of our townhome communities where we were walking outside in the snow and they were they were not quite so joyful. And I just really impressed upon them that you know this is an opportunity for us to share our gratitude with our residents and to wish them happy holidays, a happy new year. And it's the least we can do Mm -hmm. um, to to hassle ourselves a little bit to deal Mm -hmm. with the cold and that it makes us better people in doing so. And just just love having the the opportunity to share these values with our children and to 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 show them what it means to be Mm -hmm. in relationship with our residents, our team members, our investors. Um, so, of course, I had to take a picture of that. I'm just so grateful that they they had a rare uh, snow day where they were able to be with us. And then here are some of the things for 2023, and then we will wrap up here. So although this is the, the Q4 update, there's this is, it's staggering how much has already happened in just the first yeah. five weeks. It's been a busy five um, I mean, that's only, what, 10% of the year. It feels like we've lived a whole year mm-hmm. already in 2023. Mm-hmm. So uh, we had our second operator summit. Uh, uh, again, just having this elite group of people, you know, one person there has flipped, I think it was 1300 houses. And so that these people want to just come out and learn what they can from our operations. It, it's a little insane that we have 71. At one point we had 71 concurrent rehabs. There, there's just not, I've not heard of anyone else in the country doing things that, you know, that, that kind of that, that, flo- that frosty, that velocity. Um, so uh, just unbelievably excited to host another operator summit. Um, we had a, a five day retreat with, uh, you know, mo- almost our entire team. Uh, and it's a very intense seminar going 16 hours a day for five days straight through the weekend. And Elaine and I were a little nervous, like, you know, is our team going to, you know, kind of like have that, enough that's, gas? That's the to, pace that we live life, but yeah. were they going to like it? And it turns out they really loved it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, so, you know, we had a, uh, you know, a new hire uh, getting ready to start Kimberly, who's on the, on the line now. 
Uh, and I think we we built out like a hundred different, you know, action items for her. So uh, hopefully uh, Kimberly, Rachel's not just just throwing all 100 of those things at you at, at once. Um, but, you know, focusing on uh, in, improving our marketing to our tenants, just just Im improvements across our whole business and uh, just incredible bonding opportunity with uh, with our entire team there. And just so proud of, of how our team, I don't know, uh, leaned in and played full out for, for the whole five days. Um, we, uh, you know, Rachel just attended Raise Fest 2023. So that's a, you know, capital raising conference and just, you know, uh, we, we like to set ourselves apart from the competition. Uh, we're very different from most people out there who are raising capital, but it's valuable for us to know, like, like what are other people in the industry doing and make sure that we have our, our finger on the pulse of, of the, of the, the market there. Um, we did a, a modular construction tour. Um, you know, one of the, you know, kind of most interesting or, or most uh, you know preeminent uh, modular manufacturers in the country is about 45 minutes from Rochester. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just an interesting coincidence. So there's a good chance that at some point in the future we could be building a a modular apartment building. We're unbelievably excited about uh, you know kind of the, the the modular technological revolution that's happening right now, particularly in the multifamily industry, and we could have an opportunity to uh, to do that. Um, one of our construction managers just went to uh, KBIS. That's a uh, uh, a conference for home builders, basically. It's the, the kitchen and bath uh, international show. But, um, you know, looking at what are the, the types of flooring, what are the finishes, what are the types of paint, talking to vendors about getting that like national home builder pricing. Uh, and then last week, uh, you know, I had the privilege to speak to uh, Gobanus men and Elaine had the privilege to speak to Gobanus women, women. And we, uh, you know, we're both you know, our, our planes are crossing each other mm -hmm. in you know midair, so to speak, as she's going to her conference. I'm leaving my conference, and um, you know, we just got the opportunity to share and, and to serve. Um, there's no you know uh, you know call call to action or anything like that in these these speaking engagements. It's just um, you know what have we been able to do that's moved the needle in our life, uh, you know, holistically and in our business. And uh, yeah, it was it was just an incredible opportunity to to speak and to serve. And then let's talk about what you aren't seeing in our presentation. What you'll never see in our presentations is fees. Um, so we have a, a no fee model in our funds. We think that it's the right thing to do to put the needs and the interests of our investors first and to not have an ancillary income stream that our investors aren't able to participate in. So we don't have an acquisition fee, an asset management fee, a capital event fee, a loan recourse fee, disposition fees, any fees directly from raised capital. Um, it's it's very unusual in the industry to have a model like this, and we you know we hope that a mark that we can leave on capitalism mm -hmm. is that many more, if not all, private equity funds have moved in this direction by the time we're done with this earth. Um, so in 2022, there was a total of about 2.3 million of fees waived across both Fund One and Fund Two. You know, so it's together the capital is about 41 million. So 2.3 million against 41 million a is a, it's a very healthy number, and that's how we're able to you know, get returns to our investors so quickly. How we're able to get to that infinite rate of return, but then most importantly, that we're aligned with our investors. That our investors want their capital back as quickly as possible. That's what we want because we have no profit whatsoever until that milestone has been achieved. And so we're all aligned on that vision, and we can only profit the exact same way our investors do. So mm -hmm. very excited to share. Uh, 2.3 million of fees waived in 2022. Mm -hmm. We already covered the tech fund, and that is a wrap. We Thank finished you. nine minutes early. <laughs> High five. We did it. Um, of course, you can always connect with us on our website, meetblackswan.com. Um, if you'd like to get yourself on the Fund 3 waitlist, that's blackswanfund3.com. We don't have any specific date of when that will open, but likely summer of 2023. If you know anyone that you know would be interested in investing with us or learning about us, we'd love your referrals. You can either send them to Meet Black Swan. They can you know, join our newsletter, our Facebook group, schedule a call with Nick and I. Many of our investors are like one or two steps removed from each other. And we're just you know, so privileged to be able to serve the people in your community. So we'd love to have your referrals. And then there's our contact information. If you need that, our phone numbers are actually flipped. So Nick's phone number is the bottom one. And my phone number is the one um, up, up higher. Nick is much better at answering his phone than I am because he wears his little headpiece all day. Um, but that is everything. I think mm -hmm. I saw a couple of questions. Yeah. We'll, we'll answer those. Um, stay for any other questions for the next few minutes. This is a really good one that just came in here. Uh, is Fund 2 done with acquisitions and is just in the stabilization phase, or are there still assets left uh, to deploy? So is there still cash left to acquire assets? Excellent question. So between Fund 1 and Fund 2, we have about $15 million in cash on hand at this time. We expect to deploy uh, some, somewhere in the neighborhood of $6 million, maybe slightly more in the acquisition of residents at Discovery Square. That is a mammoth acquisition. And so we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, 
holding our reserves. We're, we're not going to you know, have any return of capital in fund one, and we're, we're not you know, queuing up another acquisition until we get, we get RDS closed. As a, a mammoth acquisition, we want absolute certainty on closing on that deal. We're hoping we closed already, um, but it's just it, it can be a, a slow process going through acquisitions. So we're uh, we're excited to, about where we're at in those funds, and we're excited about where we're going to be in the in the not distant future. We'll probably have another you know, couple of acquisitions, mm-hmm. I'm guessing, in fund two uh, once RDS is acquired. Really, just to, you know, we just need to get through the acquisition phase on RDS um, before we before we kind of make our our next step. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, a question that came in a little earlier um, is for fund one, what is the debt service overall monthly payment? Um, I'd have to pull up the very specific figures, but a, a pretty close number is about 85,000 per month. So about a million per year in debt service. Yep. Um, and then Nick asked, are you through with your due diligence for RDS? Um, yes, there's there's nothing that, you know, we'll stop that, the acquisition at this point. We're just working with the bank since there's an assumption of, uh, an assumption of the loan. Uh, on the debt service side, one comment I'll make is that even with our extreme renovations, uh, we are never in a situation where we uh, have like less than a 1.0 debt service cover. So we we're often able to get interest only payments. And then again, we have those seller carries where we have you know pretty significant amounts of the purchase price or no interest, no payments. So that gives us like a, a really healthy debt service coverage level across the whole portfolio and for individual assets. Uh, when you're doing deep value add, you, know, you need to be careful. You don't need to feed that thing during that first time, uh, that first year. And, uh, and that's something that we, we keep a very close eye on. I'm going to pivot to the technology fund here for a second. So pivoting to the technology fund, um, Irene asked a question. Um, for those who need to add additional capital this year, do you have any idea when that investment is due? So the technology fund is what is called callable capital. So for every 100,000 invested, 60,000 was due by the end of December, 20,000 is due in early 2023, and then 20,000 will be due in early 2024. We don't yet have the protected, the projected time for when that additional 20,000 um, will be called. When we do have that, we'll have probably about a six-week window to, to alert you so that you can free up your liquidity. My guess is it will be sometime in late Q1 or early Q2. And then as we know more, we'll make sure that we share that with people as early as possible so that you have as much um, runway as possible to, to get your, your capital liquid. Excellent yeah, question. Really, really good question. This is a super popular question. What obstacles do you see in the current environment with respect to your business model? Cash out refi seemed easy to obtain in 2021 and early 2022 will be more difficult now with increasing cap rates, lower rent growth, and high interest rates. So all, all real estate is hyper-local. And in Minnesota, we saw blunted appreciation compared to the Sun Belt in uh, 2021 and 2022, because Minnesota was more impacted by COVID, just being a more inside culture, um, which means there's a lot more runway to go in terms of in terms of rent growth. We really haven't seen, you know, like a like a, a big change in in, in pricing in, in our market. Um, you know, the single family home market is, is, is pretty much right where it was at, you know, uh, not quite at the peak, but, but somewhere close to it. Uh, multifamily, depending on what you look at, it could be off maybe 15% from the absolute peak, but there just, there wasn't much of a roller coaster ride in, in our market. Uh, and then to speak to, you know, changing interest rates. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of answers. We give that question, you know, new 52 apartments. We just, we just hit a cash out refi on that one last month. Um, so we had initial debt placement at three and a quarter percent. Uh, we, uh, you know, got the we had a really good relationship with a regional bank. We got them to do a second um, loan on that property at four and a quarter percent, about nine months after we acquired it. And then we actually just got a, a third, uh, you know, position debt on it, and that one was at six percent or something like that. I don't, I don't remember the rate on that one. Uh, so our, our blended rate is still fantastic because the bulk and that of the was debt, a full cash out refi yeah. on that project in about sixteen months. Yeah, so that, that's full cash out refi. That's a home run deal. And it happened at the worst possible time, right? Because we we got our initial debt at the when the rates were the absolute lowest, three and a quarter fixed for five years, and then the rates went up right through the you know the best possible time to hit our cash out refi, and we still found a way. Um, I think that interest rates are probably going to you know level off and then start declining, and most of it that we get is leveraged off of or indexed off of the five year Treasury, which is a forward looking index. So as soon as the Fed stops raising rates and there's indications rates could go down in the future, that five year Treasury is going to go down quite a bit. Um, I, I could spend a lot of time answering this question because it's something that I work on a lot is, is securing debt, uh, but we have about we'll, we'll say 15 different potential solutions. 
solutions to that problem of having really, really good fixed uh, fixed rate debt, low fixed rate debt, uh, wanting to do a cash out refi and not necessarily wanting to surrender that that mm-hmm. low low debt. Um, you know, residents of Old City Hall, for example, um, our debt on it is so good. I mean, we're going to hit a we're going to hit a 25 percent cash on cash rate of return on City Hall which means our investors get a full return of capital in four years with no cash out refi. And because we have 50% of that purchase price, no interest, no payments for five years, we really are not in a hurry to refinance that asset. So there's a lot of different answers to that question, but it's something that we certainly put a lot of thought into um, and, and we feel very prepared for in, in the coming years. And it's also important to remember that the vast majority of our real estate experience was before COVID, before, you know, rents just went crazy and interest rates were super low and, you know, money was being printed left and right. So we've done many, many, many cash out refis when rent growth was just normal, you know, Mm -hmm. 3%, 5% when interest rates were going up in 2016, 2017, 2018, and we were doing cash out refis at that time. So for, you know, for rents to go back to, you know, kind of what is a normal rent growth and for interest rates to go to, you know, what what it was like before COVID, it's all things that, you know, do we wish that that money was still basically free and do we wish that we would have, you know, just these skyrocketing, you know, rent growth numbers that we've had in the last couple of years, of course, but we're not worried about the overall business model. Yeah, from, from a high, question. Yeah, from a high level perspective, we're really excited about where fund one and funds two are in terms of where we expected they, they would be versus actual. And then in terms of overall market performance, if you had money in NASDAQ in 2022, you lost a third of your wealth. If you had your money in Bitcoin, you lost more than half of your wealth. It was a rough year for a lot of people in the real estate industry and in any investment class. And uh, our investors certainly have not lost a third or more than half of their their uh, uh, investment in our fund. Everyone is is well in the black and we're unbelievably excited about the uh, the, the forward outlook for our fund. Uh, and that's a, just another advantage of having that, that long time orientation. Like um, we're, we're in this for the long haul for that infant rate of return. And uh, everything so far is looking pretty good. You mm-hmm, know? Mm-hmm. Excellent question. Any other questions as we wrap up here? Great questions. There's things that we like to speak to, like, uh, you know, our operator summit and stuff like that. But if there's any any uh, any specific questions anyone has now is the time to voice, and that's why we do these live live Q and A's. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Sure. Particularly, I loved to see the attendance over the lunch hour. We're trying, you know, different times of day, different days of week, and it seemed like our attendance was great. So, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. If there's anything we can do to serve you, please do reach out. Otherwise, go have an amazing day, an amazing rest of your week, and thank you so much. Bye, Bye everyone.